Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. This is Breakfast Central and we get straight into the impact where today the conversation is all about teenage pregnancy on the continent. Now, teenage pregnancy has over the years maintained its rise across Africa as the continent continues to witness a booming birth rate and increased population with more young people than any other continent. And that's mostly due to adolescent births. A few studies conducted on adolescent pregnancy in Africa, including a recent one in 2018, published in the Global Reproductive Health Journal shows that overall nearly one-fifth of adolescents become pregnant in Africa. Statistics show that more than 70,000 adolescent girls die every year because of the, the, the complications mainly in developing countries. Most of these maternal and child deaths are often related to hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, infections, low birth weight, and preterm delivery during such teenage pregnancies. Now, pregnancy among teenagers often have implications on youth education, population growth and ill health of women. So for this reason, prevention of child marriage and reduction of adolescent pregnancy has long been the focus of attention by several governmental and non-governmental organizations. African countries and NGOs are now being urged to do more in providing programs aimed at improving contraceptive use, prevention of unintended pregnancy, prevention of early marriage and risk behavior reduction, all targeted at reducing the high rate of teenage pregnancy. Joining us today is Omolara Hana Baniwala from a youth-friendly provider at Hello Lagos Youth Center. Good morning, Omolara. How are you today? Good morning. I'm doing very fine. All right. Let's get straight into this. Uh, you know, what is your experience with, uh, you know, dealing with young girls uh, who are going through teenage pregnancies here in Lagos? Are you seeing the number increasing or are you seeing that it's, it's a pretty consistent number and a consistent number of um, a, a consistent cases? as in people coming from similar backgrounds and in similar situations. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. So in Lagos, what we see is that young people from some environment mm -hmm. get pregnant consistently. The figures are increasing. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's due to the institutional, the situation in that environment. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are in environments where they don't get support, they don't get help. And so most of the time what they do is to go and they do transactional sex. Some okay. of them get involved in transactional sex very early in life at very young age and eventually they get pregnant because they don't have enough information on contraceptive use, mm -hmm. life planning, they don't have support and all of that. So when they get to the point where they have to have sex, they cannot negotiate for condoms so much and strongly and so they end up getting pregnant. And uh, generally, are these girls in school or have they dropped out of school to pursue a life, uh, you know, to try and make a living off of transactional sex? Most of them are out of school. Mm. They are no longer in school. And some of them are in school. They are, post they are in their secondary school and they are still really young. They do not make decisions yet. Mm. But most of them are out of school. And how, how much sensitization do you think is around this? Because, uh, you know, especially from African homes, uh, even, you know, structured African homes, if I may call them that, uh, there's still a lot of taboo around speaking to a young girl about sex, you know? So, you know, I can't imagine how much more extreme it is in a situation where possibly your parents are late, you don't have a support structure environment around you, what are we doing in Lagos State in Nigeria to sensitize these young girls to the risks of certain behavior? Okay, there is the family support system, like the parents, the parent needs to stand up and start talking to their young children about sex, sex and sexual education. What, we, what is obtainable is that in Nigeria, in Lagos, everyone is scared to talk about sex. Mm. And when they do, they give wrong information, they call mm. names. When we want to talk about sex, we should call it what it is. Let mm. the girls understand. Don't say, when a boy touches you, you will get pregnant. A boy can touch me and I won't get pregnant. Mm. And once that happens, the girls get exposed and know that you are lying. So they need to start giving the accurate information. Parents need to give information for children that don't have children. Their guardians mm -hmm. need to start talking to them. And there is no age that, there's no specific age that you have to wait till when your child is 14 or 15 mm. to start talking. You can start as early as possible. Once the child can understand what you are saying, start speaking about it. There are, there are age specific information that you can give to people. You don't have to go all the way mm. out for a four years old or a five years old girl. No, you can give age specific information. But it's important that very early in life we start mm. talking about sexual education. But some of the things that are around now is that non governmental organizations are going around, like Youth Empowerment and Development Initiative, where I work. We mm. go to schools, 
We work with in-school adolescents. We talk to them about sexual reproductive health generally. Then we work with out-of-school adolescents too. We go to them, we talk to them about their sexual health and all that they need to know about teenage pregnancy, about contraceptive use, about how they can make decisions and plan their life. There is also the Hello Lagos Center where adolescents come in every day on a daily basis. Youth friendly we, we offer youth friendly services mm -hmm. there. So they come in on a daily basis and they are given the opportunity to assess every kind of information and service on sexual reproductive health. Yes. Now, I know a lot of people, especially, I, I, you know, I'm going to say old school people, uh, will feel that all this discussion around, you know, sexual behavior and, uh, you know, reproductive uh, health and so forth at this stage actually influences them to be curious and want to engage. Uh, how far are we going? How far have we come in dispelling this? Uh, because I know a lot of people feel like, well, you know, it's better that we don't talk about it because once we talk about it, we're planting ideas in these children's minds. Okay, so whether we talk about these things or not, mm. adolescents will get information. They are at the age where they are curious, they mm -hmm. get to talk to people. And where they get the information from is very important. Mm -hmm. So if adults and those people from the old age, what they say is that ah, once you start talking about this, the girls get exposed, they want to explore. No, mm -hmm. it's the process of giving the information. What you do is not to give a one-sided information and say, when you have sex, you do this. You give all the information. That's what's called informed. You give, make them make informed choice. Mm -hmm. It's not in your place to decide for adolescents what to do. Whether you discuss it or not, they have friends. They go out every day. They get, they're in contact with people that know more than them, that have the wrong information. Mm -hmm. Adults that are around looking for young people to take advantage of. So it's important that we give them this information mm -hmm. so that from t immediately they see it, they recognize, they get the signal. When they see the red light, they know that this is red light. Mm -hmm. When they see the green light, they know that this is a green light. But when we don't talk about it, they won't know what to do. They will go and talk to their friends. And most of the time, their friends also have the same information they have. So when they tell their friends that there's a guy in my compound that wants to give me money and have sex with me, the friend will say, yes, go ahead, we need money. Mm -hmm. Because she also has exactly the same information the girl has. Mm -hmm. So it's important that parents, adults start sharing information. The more we run away from it, the more these things will increase, the more mm -hmm. we have young girls falling victims of all these attacks from other people. And you know, it's currently exam season in East Africa and Kenya and Uganda. And one of the things we saw is we saw a rise in the statistics of young girls who were giving birth during exams. So the authorities there do allow girls to continue with their uh, education while they're pregnant. And there's even the, op the opportunity to write your exams from the hospital, um, you know, if, if you're almost due. Um, it, what what a, this is almost uh, not heard of in, in the rest of Africa, where the moment a child becomes pregnant, a teenager becomes pregnant, they're forced out of school. Uh, you know, how far are we going with that legislation? And is this something that uh, should be encouraged? Should pregnant girls remain in school? Um, and what's the effect of that on their peers if they should return in school, uh, remain in schools? Yes, pregnant girls should be encouraged to go back to school because most of the times they have goals and they mm. have intentions that get, distra they get mm. distracted once they get pregnant. So what we need to do, I have case, I've seen cases of girls that hide their pregnancy because mm. they want to finish their exam. Mm. Once the pregnancy is detected, they'll be sent out of school. So what they do is that they take stuffs, they wear clothes, mm. they wear pullovers that will not show that they're pregnant so that they can finish their exam. But in a situation where everybody is well-educated about this, they will be able to freely come into the school and write the exam. Mm -hmm. Or at the worst, when they give birth, they should be taken back to school. That's one of the things that we offer in Elo Lagos Youth Friendly Center. Mm -hmm. We take them in while they are pregnant and help them. We ask them if they really want to go back to school. And once they show interest in going back to school, once they deliver, there's a linkage with Lagos State Government and the center. Mm -hmm. So we take them back into school and they continue their education. That's what. Okay, okay, so we're working towards yeah. this, but legally, or shall I say with regards to the Constitution, we're still a long way yes. from, you know, giving room for pregnant uh, yeah. teenagers to be able to be afforded the same rights as their peers in terms of education. But let's look at their rights in terms of health care, because the mother-child uh, mortality rate is shocking. It's alarmingly high. Um, you know, wh what are the interventions in this case where we know the situation? More often than not, a lot of these girls are abandoned by their families when the families discover that they're pregnant, uh, you know, especially if there isn't 
a significant other, somebody who's ready to take yeah. responsibility for the pregnancy and so forth. Uh, uh, is there support available during the pregnancy and when it's time to give birth? For, I mean, this is, this is a girl in school who's never worked a day in her life, so she probably can't afford it. Yeah, so what Lagos State Government is doing currently mm -hmm. is that they're opening centers. It's called the Young Mom Clinic. Mm -hmm. It's a program under the Elo Lagos Youth Friendly Center. Elo Lagos Youth Friendly Center is owned by Lagos State Government, but is managed by Youth Empowerment mm -hmm. and Development Initiative. So what we do is that we have a session of the, pro of the programming where we have a clinic for only young teenagers that are pregnant. Mm. The reason why that is so is that when they come into that clinic, there are no discriminations. Mm -hmm. Everyone that works there are trained health workers that understands them. They don't have to go into the regular hospital settings where a nurse is seeing them and wondering why a 12 years old is pregnant and mm. all the other pregnant women are like, ah, you're supposed to be in school. Mm. So all of that is removed when they come into that facility. Their antenatal care is taken care of, is free. Mm -hmm. They don't have to pay for anything and they get the best of services while they are there. Then their postnatal, while, when, while they go through that process, we start making provisions for things that they can do after, after giving birth. Mm. Some of them want to learn a trade and get to do something. They don't want to go back to school. Mm. And some others want to go back to school. So we start making arrangements for them to get back into mm. school. And one of the other things that we make available for them while they are pregnant is that we help them get materials that they need to train their children, like the kits for delivery, some mm. of the things that they will need to take care of the baby while the baby is still and when the baby comes, then mm. we ensure that while they are with us, they learn something. Mm. They learn a trait to empower them such that they can start doing something for themselves mm. to get money while they are at home. Okay. That's what we do with them. So in your experience, how, you know, how fruitful has it been? What does life for you know, a young girl, a teenager, or a, shall I say an adolescent who's given birth in Lagos, because that's your, you know, where you yeah. work, what does life look like for that girl generally after she gives birth. Uh, are there some positive stories? Uh, are there some girls who've been able to, you know, g get back to life and build themselves? Um, generally, what happens? Because you do find that this can become a recurring cycle uh, where immediately once the, the girl is in a position to do so, she goes straight back to transactional sex because that's how she's able to maintain a living. And then the cycle keeps repeating itself. And then before we know it, we're getting into you know, abortion, which is a whole other conversation because it's still illegal, um, even at the adolescent mm -hmm. age for teenage pregnancy and so forth. But what does the future in your experience, what has their life looked like for these young girls after giving birth? For some of them, they, they get back to school. It's mm. been positive. After they go through all of the programs... And they're that accepted have, yes. without stigma. Yes, okay. yes. We go to the school and talk to the principal mm. and everyone that is involved in the school. They take them back like regular students okay. and they help them grow. We have stories of girls that have done that and they are currently in the university. Oh, incredible. Some of them, and for some of them, they don't go back to school. They mm. themselves do not want to go back to school because they are scared of the stigma. Mm. So what we do for those kind of girls that we keep, we can do continuous counseling mm -hmm. till they are able to come out of that point that they are now different from the other girls. Mm -hmm. And some of them go back to school. Not all of them want to go back to school. Some of them just want to get a job or something that they can do so mm. that they can take care of their child. But for those ones that want to go back to school, it's been positive. Mm. Take them back to school. Some of them are now in higher institution level and they are doing very fine. All right. Now, what about access to uh, access to birth control materials? Uh, because this is another controversial conversation uh, where there are groups who feel that, you know what, birth control should be available in schools. Uh, you, you know, if you go into the bathroom, these things should be readily available because it's not just pregnancy that we're scared of. Mm -hmm. There are also STDs and STIs. Uh, you, you know, what's your stance on that and where, where do you feel we're going uh, as a society with regards to that? Okay, as a society, currently the laws in Nigeria does not even, is not favorable okay. for contraceptive use. The, the age for contraceptive use is 18 years and above and some okay. of these girls, they get active before they are of 18 course, years. Yeah. So we need to Look, our government needs to look into things like this and help bring down the age for contraceptive to a very favorable age, maybe 14 years, 13 years. But the issue is that even the people in the community, a lot of people in the community believe that once you give an adolescent contraceptive, you are making the person yeah, have sex to sense. just have sex. And it's not true. Most of the schools in Lagos, even out of school students, they are stigmatized. You cannot see 
an adolescent, they don't have confidence to walk up to somebody and ask for condom. Yeah. And is it makes it difficult for them to also have to also negotiate sex because yeah. sometimes when a girl negotiates sex, the guy just believes that ah, this girl must have been very promiscuous for her to be able to. And that is not it. She's just trying to negotiate her life. Is a mm. life at stake, and she's negotiating for her life. So we need to have laws that can support this. Then the community needs to fight for this. I. I keep telling people that when we say that you don't want these people to be exposed to this, okay, they are exposed to pregnancy, they get pregnant, mm. and then we have, they have unintended pregnancy that leads to abortions because they would not go to the right place. They go, to, they go for unsafe abortion. Mm. And even now, abortion is illegal. It's illegal, yeah. No matter what happens, even if the girl was raped and she mm. got three years pregnant, it's still illegal. Mm. So if these are laws that need to be looked into. The law that covers abortion for adolescents, the mm. law that talks about life planning and family planning, contraceptive use for adolescents, it needs to be more feasible. Mm. These things are not realistic. We need to come out of our slumber mm. and live a realistic life. These people will have sex, whether we, we allow them or not. Mm -hmm. So we need to put some measures to just drop the dangers that they are exposed to. So on a, legislat on a legislative level, I mean, wh what, how does one exert pressure on the government so that they do become aware that, you know, these are things that matter and these are things that need reform? Are there any actions, any steps you're taking, you and your organization? Yes, there are advocates that are out mm. advocating for this. We have organizations, it's like a linkage, mm. one person cannot do it. We of have course, yeah. Nuri doing a lot of work on family planning and life mm. planning for adolescents. We have SFH, that's the um, Society for Family Health. Mm -hmm. They are also working on contraceptive for adolescents. We as Yedi also, we are outside, we are with government talking about, there are meetings of or meetings where people go for and talk to the government that mm -hmm. we need to work on this. There are conferences that have been held, mm -hmm. but we just need to get to a point. We just need our leaders to come out of their sentiments. Mm -hmm. they, they don't, it's like they don't believe yet. Mm -hmm. we, are, we don't face the truth yet. Unlike some other countries like Kenya that you mentioned, mm -hmm. They have come to the reality that this is happening. Let's put measures to yeah. stop it. We need to come out of that point and start on the, come to reality and start mm -hmm. doing things that will help reduce the risk. Because these things go a long way. Sometimes it leads to death. Some of the yeah. girls, because they don't want to speak up, they take stuff mm -hmm. to harm themselves, harm the baby, and they die in the process. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's, we need to start thinking about, do we want this or that? Mm -hmm. Do we want the rate of death to increase? Do we want the dropouts from schools to increase? Or do we want to have adolescents that, yes, they are sexually active, but they are living a good life and mm. they are doing well? Okay, all right. I think that's been a lot of information. Um, so where can we con contact uh, the Hello Lagos Youth Center? How do we reach out to you in case there's somebody who's watching and uh, wants to be a part of what you're doing or possibly, you know, knows a young girl who needs your assistance? Okay, so currently we have two of the centers mm -hmm. running in Lagos, the Young Mom Clinic. Mm -hmm. We have one on Lagos Island, Okwawo. Mm -hmm. When someone's the person gets to Okwawo, you can ask anybody that they're going to Hello Lagos, Okwawo mm -hmm. Youth Friendly Center. Then we have one at Ajiromi, okay. that's Ajikunle, inside the health center there. Aside from those two centers, we have other Hello Lagos centers that run and refer girls to the mm -hmm. to many. So we have one at Ogudu, okay. the Ogudu General Hospital. We have one at Lasut, mm -hmm. that's inside Lasut General Hospital. Then we have one at um, Ikeja, yes, okay. that's one inside Lasut. So they can refer. Okay, so you've got to yeah. covered Lagos. Yes. Incredible. Thank you so much for this, Omalara. It was a, very insightful. I think we've learned a lot. More than anything, I think we've realized that we need to speak up more. Yeah. More pressure needs to be put on the government because it seems that a lot of the laws are holding us back yes. in doing what needs to be yes. done. Thank, Thank you so much. Incredible work. Well, there you have it. Some insight into teenage pregnancies with a main focus on Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, a great conversation that we need to continue to to have so that we can build the awareness and uh, find ways to address uh, some of the challenges that our young girls are facing.